Today we're going to talk about a Serbian film, so I'm sorry. Mom, I know you're hip to the young people jive, but if you're watching this, please don't. For everyone else, word of caution, a Serbian film deals with a lot of disturbing subject matter that will be discussed and displayed pretty plainly, so if you think you're liable to get intractably offended, do yourself a favor and just skip this one. Also, fair warning, I'll be making fun of stuff in this movie that people may think shouldn't be made fun of, but if we're incapable of laughing at it, then the power stays in the hands of whoever can be the most shocking, and that shouldn't be true. Remember, we are talking about a movie here. An aggressively, knowingly vile movie. That said, I'm going to do my best to keep things classy. I can't shy away from some of the imagery, but my narration will be the epitome of delicate nuance and euphemism, I promise. Stop you. Shock is an offshoot of spectacle, and by that logic, movies that coast on their shocking content go back to the 1890s. But in terms of exploitative, gratuitous violence, Blood Feast is often used as a progenitor because in 1963 it took blood and made it gore, took internal organs and made them external. Like a cult movie, the idea of it became more important than the content. No one ever considered it good, just that it would provide a novel thrill. Joe Bob Briggs called it one of the first pieces of pop culture archaeology, rediscovered and revered not for its entertainment value, but for being antisocial and forbidden. The tradition lives on in movies like The Human Centipede and Antichrist, at opposite ends of the critical spectrum, but both attracting attention for their promise of shocking content. And they are Muppets to a Serbian film's feebles. Writer Aleksandr Radivojevic and director Sergen Spazjevic, who will be Spaz from now on, sent out to literally translate their feelings about government coercion and human rights violations in Serbia to film. It's not the first time political criticism was translated into a depraved movie. Pasolini did it with Fascist Italy and Salo back in 1975, though he was slightly too murdered to enjoy the critical reception. In fact, this isn't even the first time that a depraved movie has been made to highlight the Serbian oppression using pornography as an analog. The Life and Death of a Porno Gang did the same thing in 2009, though its cheap production value and era flippancy prevented the same level of notoriety. Spaz uses the political subtext of a Serbian film to contextualize the shock value into something critically acceptable. By frequently restating his personal, cathartic intentions, he divorces the movie from spectacle. It almost feels as though it's a conscious attempt to create a critic-proof film. Did you love it? Good! You appreciated the intimate and uncompromising message. Did you hate it? Good! The abuse of power and violation of victims should disgust you. Did you find the content absurd to the point of self-parody? Good! You understand the levels of absurdity to which the issue has been allowed to putrefy in Serbia. But a truly critic-proof film has to be meaningless. The fake snuff film August Underground would be a good example, but please just take my word for that. It's more oppressively vile than a Serbian film, and is intentionally meaningless. There is nothing to criticize except superficial minutia. Spaz and Co. made the mistake of giving their movie a purpose so there's a chink in that armor. You can attack the movie on effectiveness of transmission and validity of content. Or at least that's my plan. For those of you who haven't had the... Pleasure is the wrong word. Let's take an overview of a Serbian film. Remember, delicate nuance and euphemism. Here, kittens. Ten seconds in, the idea that the director never meant to shock anyone is fairly suspect. Seems more like he was thinking, Baby, I'm gonna fuck you up. Milos is a retired adult film personality who lives a comfortable life with his lady friend and their son, who at the outset of the film is admiring some of his father's performance art. The family is financially insecure, so when Milos is offered a high-paying job by a lady from his past and his brother, a policeman, he eventually accepts. Vic Moore is a nice gentleman who is trying to bring a sense of artistry to adult films. As Milos signs a lucrative contract, his brother suggests maybe he wishes that Milos's girlfriend were more than just an in-law to him. On their first day shooting at an orphanage, a lady gives Milos relations while he watches her young daughter on a monitor. Concerned about the legality of his situation, he asks his brother to perform a background check on Vikmore. The next day, the lady is back, and Milos engages in unpleasant and potentially harmful activities with her while her daughter sits patiently to one side. Deciding that this sort of performance art is outside of his comfort zone, Milos tells Vikmore that he is not interested in pursuing the occupation further. Vikmore responds by showing Milos a home video of a man delivering a baby and then immediately... loving it until it is... I've never actually watched this part. The best I've done is stared at the wall next to the TV with the volume really low. So congratulations, a Serbian film. You got me, I guess. If anyone was wondering what my limit for morbid curiosity is, voila. 
seven. Newborn! Four! Newborn! Milos is rendered unconscious soon after due to medicine Vigmor put in his drink. He wakes up the next day with no memory of what happened and spends the rest of the movie piecing it together like a detective with the help of some tapes he finds. He learns that the medicine he was given made him like ladies a whole lot, so when his friend is put on a bed he proceeds to like her a whole lot, until Vicmor whispers mean things in his ear and then hands him a big knife and he gets a little too excited. He's already out of his head and now she's out of hers. Milos isn't finished yet, but he's pulled away and given some medicine to make him very sleepy. So sleepy that he doesn't even notice when one of Vicmor's friends sneaks in to say hello, 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 hello. When he wakes up, he's in a house with the daughter and her grandmother who suggests that he and her granddaughter be friends. Gdje si čast da našo jeci uslišiš devojačku pričest? Ženu od nje da napraviš. Milos does what I wanted to do at that point. Finally, Milos is taken into a big room with a bed in the middle. On the bed are two people with their heads hidden. Still feeling the effects of the I love ladies medicine, Milos goes to town, and he's soon joined by a masked man. Oh, Milos, that's not a lady. That's your ten-year-old son. And that's just one surprise in this wacky set of reveals. The masked man is Milos's brother, and the other body on the bed is his girlfriend. Well, that's one surprise too many, and Milos decides he's had enough of that party. A stolen gun gets him past most of the guards, but when it runs out of ammo, Milos has to improvise. Yes, I would have gone straight to that too. Curled into a protective embrace on the bed with his family, Milos decides he's had just about enough of these shenanigans, so he fires a bullet through all three of them. But a Serbian film couldn't resist one last surprise. Right. Okay, everybody take a deep breath or two. Here, puppies. Okay, first, how effective is this movie at communicating its message of government coercion and violation? Well, the metaphor is pretty thin. We feel like the government rapes us. Hey, let's make a movie with a lot of rape in it. That's as far as it goes, really. Milos is tossed into increasingly depraved situations, but none color the central metaphor in any different ways. He's a retired porn star, which means he's already someone who has made questionable choices. There's no suggestion that he was forced into the industry at the beginning, so his status as an oppressed everyman is kind of tainted. In fact, he seems very quick to indulge aggressive sexual tendencies before he even meets Vikmur. The family's tough financial situation is summed up in a single instance of sending their kid to music classes. They live in a nice home and they have nice things, and the implied wealth Vicmore is offering makes the choice more about greed than desperation. And let's talk about the claim the director makes. I never thought, let's make a shocking film. You born! Born! Whoops. He may be referring to shock as a necessary but incidental byproduct of honesty. Even so, of course you set out to make a shocking film. Can you even argue that, really? Milos having to piece together his past is a great device because it represents the ultimate loss of control, but there's two problems with it. One, it keeps the protagonist out of any immediate danger and reduces his discovery process to a gross-out slideshow. Remember, we're expecting the worst at this point, so remove drama and tension and what's left, spectacle, the one thing that Spaz said he wasn't trying to do. Two, the transmission of information comes down to this. Anyone else getting some voyeuristic undercurrent here? A little bit? Anybody? Everything comes to a head in the finale, which is where I finally lost it and just started laughing. Now, I'm not one of those obnoxious, jaded, look how little this affects me types either, but the absurd series of escalating reveals was so melodramatically showy that it was all you could do. They were a hair's breadth away from having each one accompanied by Vikmore grinning and nodding directly into the lens like, wait for it. If you're dealing with something like countrywide human rights violations, laughable absurdity is a line you probably don't want to cross. <laughs> Okay, expecting subtlety from a Serbian film is dumb. It seems fundamentally opposed to it. Take this scene, intended to show us Marco's feelings toward Milo's girlfriend. They start off with a perfectly good, subtle moment. Then less subtle. Less subtle. Toilet. Very much less subtle. But to me, subtlety is what works. The moments in movies that stick with you are where they've constructed this massive secret artifice just past your sight, and then they drop that one tiny keystone in the form of a line, a look, a shot, a cut, and all of a sudden you see the whole thing perfectly. It just comes flooding in. They make you do the work and make you want to do the work. You feel like you're part of it. You figured it out. 
Shock is by definition sudden, it jumps out at you, but unlike Milos, has no staying power. There's a play that affected me more than any other I've seen, it's called Where the Blood Mixes, and it ends on the line, I cross this bridge every day, and that line is going to stay with me forever. And I repeat it here because it's so banal and meaningless to you. No shock, no surprise, but in context it is the perfect culmination, and no one was raping anybody when they said it. Oh, uh, maybe metaphorically, but that, that's another story. Challenged with this, Spaz would probably argue that the Serbian film was personal catharsis as though any audience at all was incidental. They put their feelings on film and, oh, you, oh, you want to watch it? Oh, gee, I never thought of that. Yeah, I guess we could let you watch it. So is there anything wrong with that? I guess not if it's genuine. Film is a populist medium by culture, not definition. Straight up porn goes in art galleries with less fuss because of the cultural assumptions about certain spaces. And this gets at an age-old debate about the considerations of audience by auteurs, which I'm firmly on the consider side of. At the very least, Spaz should consider how film culture undercuts his message. He can be disappointed by reactions to the movie, but he can't reasonably be surprised by them. The BBFC ordered cuts made because they felt the violence and sexuality of the film were put in a context of exhilaration. Remember Salo? It had a bumpy censorship history. In Australia right now, you can rent the DVD, but not see it in the theater. Why? Because the DVD's extra content contextualizes the movie. The worry is that, taken on its own, extreme content with artistic motivation is reduced to pornography for gorehounds. Even if we allow that this may not have been Spaz's intent, oh, you better believe that's why people are watching it. No one's watching this movie to appreciate the suffering of the Serbian people. They're watching it to see crazy shit. That's the culture of film, and they knew that going into this. How do you properly exploit disturbing and shocking images to push an agenda? You make it a documentary, which Spaz might say couldn't be as meaningful and wouldn't be as widely discussed or watched. And that's true, but the discussion right now abandons your intent entirely. It's a catch-22. You only get an audience for your message by making it notoriously shocking, but in doing so you attract almost exclusively people uninterested in your message. Effective use of shock value is a delicate thing. It has to be contextualized carefully and come under exactly the right circumstances to not feel exploitative. An aggressively, ceaselessly shocking film just abandons all the best qualities of the medium, whatever your intentions were. It may have been personal and cathartic, but it was let out for mass consumption, and when that message is lost, the movie has failed.